Hello and welcome to this guide from West Berkshire Libraries on how to use BorrowBox to access ebooks and the audiobooks on a tablet device. In this video we'll be covering a number of things that will help you to access our e-library using the BorrowBox app. We'll cover how you can sign into the app, how you can browse the collection to see what's available, how to borrow and reserve items, how to manage your loans and return items, how you can alter some basic app settings and find some help and top tips, and lastly how to personalise your reading and listening settings to make using the app a better experience for you. Remember that you need to be a library member and know your library card and PIN to be able to borrow from our e-library. If you're not already a member, you can join online now. You can also reset your PIN at any time via our main library catalogue. Downloading the app. To download the app for BorrowBox, you need to use the App Store for your device. This guide is for all tablet devices, so your App Store will be dependent on which tablet you are using. On an Apple device, this would be the App Store. On an Android tablet device, this would be the Play Store. And if you're using a Kindle Fire, you'll find BorrowBox in the Amazon App Store. When you search for the app, just type in BorrowBox and you'll be able to download the app for free. Signing into the app. When you've downloaded BorrowBox, find the app on your device and click on BorrowBox to load it. You'll need your library card to hand to be able to complete the signing in process. The first thing you'll see as the app opens is a sign in with your library ID page. Here you'll need to select your library authority by clicking on the library line and typing in West Berkshire Libraries. Once you've got that selected, you'll be able to enter your ID or barcode. This is your library card number, so it's the long number on the back of your library card. Once you've got that number typed in, you can also enter your PIN. This is a four digit number you chose when you joined the library. Once you've got all of those details in place, you'll be able to click sign in and move to the next step in the process. Once you've clicked sign in, you'll next be taken to the terms and conditions page. These are the terms and conditions for using the BorrowBox app. You'll need to read and agree to those terms and conditions to complete your registration. Once you've accepted them, you'll next be taken to the final step in the signing in process, which is the complete registration screen. Here you'll be asked to enter an email address and display name. It's completely up to you which email address and display name you choose to link to your BorrowBox account and you can update these details later on in your account settings. On the complete registration page you'll also see that you've got the option to subscribe to two newsletters. The library newsletter is for West Berkshire Libraries and the BorrowBox newsletter comes directly from the BorrowBox team. Again, it's completely up to you whether you choose to subscribe to those news newsletters. You should be able to just tick or untick the option to subscribe to either of those newsletters. And again, you can update this later in your settings. Once you're happy with everything on this page, you can click done and this will create your BorrowBox account and allow you to start browsing the catalogue. Borrowing. Let's get started and have a look around. When you first sign in to the BorrowBox app, you'll see that you're currently in the My Loans tab. This is where you'll see any of your current loans and reservations, as well as your loan history. We'll have a look at this again later. On BorrowBox, you can browse for either e-audiobooks or e-books. Both of these tabs are located at the bottom of your screen and you can click on either of those options to start browsing the collections. When you click on one, you'll see the home page for either e-audiobooks or e-books, depending on what you've clicked, and you'll also see some featured collections such as new to library, top downloads or instant access titles. You might see some different collections here from time to time as the featured collections do change. 
At the top of the screen, you'll also see some other options that you can use to browse the catalogue. You can narrow down your search by adult, children or young adult content and you can also use the search options featured, categories, genres or all releases to help you narrow down what you're looking for. The home pages for e-audiobooks and e-books have very similar layouts and will allow you to browse the catalogue in exactly the same way. The fourth tab at the bottom of the screen, next to e-books and the audiobooks, is a search option. If you click on search, this will allow you to look for a book by title or by author's name. So if you're looking for a specific item, you can use this feature to find it in the app. You can have a look and see whether it's available as an ebook or e audiobook, and also narrow down the list by just clicking available and seeing what's available to borrow right away. It's completely up to you how you choose to browse the catalogue, and you'll find a way that works best for you once you start using it. Borrowing. When you're browsing, it will say under the title and author's name if an item is out on loan or not. If there's no orange writing there, then it means it's available to borrow right away. If you click on the item you'd like to borrow, it will open the record and show you some more information about the item. You'll see a description, some reviews, and you can also preview the ebook or the audiobook first before you borrow it. This is a really useful feature, particularly if you want to hear the narrator of an audiobook before borrowing. When you have decided to borrow an item, you can click on the green borrow button in the bottom right hand corner of the page and confirm your loan. You can borrow or reserve seven ebooks and seven e audiobooks at a time on Borrowbox, and you get each of those for a 14 day loan period. Once you've confirmed your loan, you'll get a pop up box saying your loan has been successful. You can either keep browsing or choose to listen or read now. If you're borrowing an e audiobook, and you click listen now, you'll be taken to a second screen where you can download the e-audiobook either all in one go or track by track depending on your preferences. If you're downloading an e-book, you'll get read now and if you click on that, it will download the e-book all in one go to your device. You'll need your Wi-Fi to be connected to your tablet and switched on to be able to download items on Borrowbox. And that's it. You'll be ready to start reading and listening straight away. Reserving. If you're browsing and you come across a book which is not available, you'll be able to see it says on loan in orange letters under the author's name on the listing. It will also tell you when the book will next be available. This is not always accurate as people can return items early so you may not need to wait as long. To reserve an item, click on it to open the record and then click on the orange reserve button in the bottom right hand corner. Once you tap reserve, it will prompt you to confirm your reservation and it will then let you know that your reservation has been placed successfully. It will also again give you the estimation of your waiting time for the item. A reservation on Borrowed Box will take one of your seven ebook and e audiobook slots. When a title becomes available, it will automatically appear in your loans ready for you to download straight away. Managing your loans and returning items. You can always see which titles you've borrowed or reserved in the My Loans tab. This is the first tab in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Here you'll be able to see how long you've got your loans for and you can also renew any items on your shelf if you need them for a bit longer. In Borrowbox you'll be able to renew an item even if somebody's waiting for it and the next person will still be able to access the title when they were originally told as well. To resume an item that you were reading or listening to, you can just click on it here in My Loans and it will pick up exactly where you left off. Any items you borrow will automatically expire after a 14 day loan period and they will be returned for you unless you choose to renew them. This means that you will never have any overdue items and you won't get fined for any late returns, which we're sure you will agree is good news. You can, however, choose to return items before the 14 days are over by clicking the return button next to an item and confirming your return. 
This will make the books available for the next person in the list straight away if there's a waiting list. And of course, it means that if you've previously had your maximum of seven books on loan yourself, you can now choose another one straight away. Settings. On whichever device you're using, you'll be able to access your settings. On a tablet device, you can find your settings in the fifth tab on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you open up those settings, you'll see some different options listed here, such as instant borrow and reserve, automatic downloads and progress synchronization. These three features allow the app to work just slightly differently for you and you can set those according to your personal preferences. Settings is also where you can find and view your account details, such as your library barcode, email address and display name linked with your BorrowBox account. Here you can choose to subscribe and unsubscribe from the library and BorrowBox newsletters and edit and update your email address and display name if you'd like to. You can also choose to reset the app entirely on this page. In settings you can also access some BorrowBox tips to help further guide you and get the most out of using the app or send feedback to the BorrowBox team if you encounter a problem. Remember, we are also happy to help with any problems at West Berkshire Libraries, so you can email any questions directly to us by using library at westbarks.gov.uk to contact us. Personalisation when reading and listening. When you're reading on your device, you can personalise some of the settings to make the experience better for you. Let's have a look at some of those features now. The first page of an ebook is always the front cover of the story. To move to the next page, you can tap on the right hand side of your tablet screen. This will allow you to quickly skip to the following page. To return to the previous page, you can tap on the left hand side of your screen. Some tablet devices will also allow you to click on the right hand side of your page and peel it back to allow the turning of digital pages to feel more like you're turning the pages of a physical book. Within BorrowBox, there are also plenty of text settings we can alter to make the reading experience better for us. Let's skip to a page with text on and have a look at some of those. If you tap on the middle of your page, you'll see some options will appear at the top and bottom of your screen. Let's have a look at the options on the bottom of the screen first, starting with the grid in the bottom left hand corner. If you click on that, it will open a title and contents page at the side of your screen. This will allow you to quickly skip between chapters. Next to the grid, you'll see a small uppercase A next to a slightly larger uppercase A. If you click on those, we can start looking at our text settings. The top option will allow you to make the text smaller or larger, depending on your preferences. And you can also select a font. The fonts allow you to choose one that suits you best and there's also a dyslexic friendly font available if you'd like. You can also set a page theme such as paper white, white sepia or even a night mode to reduce screen glare. You can set those all according to your personal preferences. Below themes you've got the option to read in two columns or just have a single page and you can also select narrow, normal or wide ruled paper again depending on your personal preferences. Next to those text options on the bottom of the screen there's also a skip forward and skip backwards button. These will allow you to cycle between chapters without opening the contents page. If you just click on one of the arrows, it will skip to the start of the next chapter. Next to the skip forward chapter button, on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you see a magnifying glass icon. This is a search function, and if you click on the magnifying glass, you'll see it will open a search bar on the right hand side of your tablet screen. The search bar will allow you to type in any word that's been used within the text, and will list all instances of where that word has been used within the book. This is a really useful feature if you're trying to track down times when a specific character has been mentioned or you're trying to locate a specific scene from within the book. Next to the magnifying glass icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen is an open book icon. 
This is our bookmarking tool. If you click on the open book icon, it will again open on the right hand side of your tablet screen. And this time it will show you all the times that you've opened or closed the ebook while you've been reading on your tablet. It will automatically generate a bookmark every time you open or close the book on the app, but you can also add your own bookmarks by returning to the page that you're reading, tapping the centre of the page to remove the settings from around the outside, and tapping the top right hand corner of your page to fold it down. This creates your own bookmark, and when you return to your bookmarking setting, you'll see that that bookmark has been added to the list. So alongside the automatically generated bookmarks, you can also add the chapters that you'd like to resume from and add your own bookmarks as you go along to help track your reading journey. Alongside the personalization settings within eBooks, there are also settings you can personalize within the eAudiobooks to make the listening experience better for you. Let's have a look at some of those settings now. When you open up an e-audiobook, you'll see at the top of the screen you've got options for player, details or more. An e-audiobook will automatically open in the player screen to allow you to start listening to the e-audiobook straight away. In the details screen, you'll see a brief synopsis of the book and also some further information about the publication details. In more, you'll find information about the author, the narrator and also suggestions for similar e-books or e-audiobooks that you may be interested in. In the main player screen, at the top right hand corner of the screen, there's a grid menu. If you click on that, it will open our contents page or track listing. This allows you to see all of the different tracks within the audiobook. You can download these one by one to your device or all together depending on your preference, but it allows you to navigate the audiobook slightly easier. On the main screen, in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see an option for playback speed. This is the speed in which the narrator reads to you. If you click on that, you'll see different options for speed. It's completely up to you what you set this to, but you can have them reading at half speed, double speed, or even triple speed. Again, you can set that according to your personal preference. On the other side of the screen, in the bottom left corner, you'll see a sleep option. If you click on this, you can see that it will give you different options for sleep settings. This means that the e-audiobook will stop playing after a specific amount of time. So if you're listening to an e-audiobook before bed, you can have it automatically turn off after 10 or 15 minutes of you listening. On this main page, you can also fast forward, rewind or skip forward or backwards 30 seconds. That's just a brief look at some of the personalization settings that you can enable when reading an e-book or listening to an e-audiobook. Have a play around with those settings and make sure that you're getting the most out of your reading or listening experience. We do hope that you enjoy using BorrowBox. Remember that we have other apps that you can use to access our e-library as well. Libby will give you access to a further collection of e-books, e-audiobooks and e-magazines and Press Reader offers access to daily and weekly newspapers from the UK and Ireland. Happy reading from all at West Berkshire Libraries.